Oh, hey guys, I'll be with you in just a moment. I'm just finishing up some whitewashing here. Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of uh, Barrel Bottom Reviews. I guess I'm still calling the show, right? I'm your host, Brian Kish. And you know, today I have a bootleg copy of a movie that's in theaters right now, but uh, I felt like I really wanted to just give my opinion to you and have a hard copy to be able to kind of reference later. So that movie, of course, is Black Klansman. So I'm just going to uh, pop that on now and uh, tell you what I think. I'll be right back in uh, about two hours. Okay, I think I have the wrong uh, copy here, um, but I did watch the whole thing, so I feel like I, I kind of want to talk about it now. I want to talk about some things. Oh, hey. All right. Black Klansman from 1966 is a, uh, I guess you would call it a movie, just barely 90 minutes. Oh, God, where to start? So the alternate title for this movie was I Crossed the Color Line, 1966. And uh, except for the original cut that I saw on Amazon Prime, uh, this one opens with an alternate opening of just the titles on a blank gray background, whereas the other one started with uh, the clan standing around a burning cross in one static shot for about two minutes with a rocking song going... The Ku Klux Klan that killed my baby. But it's not like the, you know, it's not like the Ramones song or anything like that. It's just uh, it's creepy and weird and inappropriate, which kind of uh, sets the tone for the rest of this movie. Yeah, where to start with this crap heap? Um, allow me to white spleen you a while, Spike Lee. Oh god, yeah, this one has the same kind of vibe that you would find from like a movie like Reefer Madness or like Stupid 5 Minute Shorts uh, in that it has a lot of stilted dialogue. Awkward insert shot cutting in the middle of the scene and then cutting back to the same static shot that was already happening or, um, you know, just over-expressive eyebrow acting like in the episode of Twilight Zone Walking Distance. You get random scenes of teenagers dancing and uh, really bad inner dialogue inside the character's mind. So, this one sort of has good intentions. I mean, it seems to be on the right side of history, but kind of for all the wrong reasons. And I feel like, uh, you know, the recent civil rights movement was kind of just another subject matter for the filmmakers to pick up and make another exploitation movie out of it like they would something else like you know biker gangs or whatever and this kind of feels yes kind of illegitimately on the side of desegregation I mean it kind of reminds me of when like Trump goes fake news and you're like yeah mainstream news has a lot of problems but uh you're onto something for all the wrong reasons, buddy. So yeah, goddamn, this movie is uh, cheap, and like I said, begins with this very kind of like front-loaded with uh, plot song, sung that with this kind of like cheery, rockabilly, carefree attitude, which really belongs in a different movie and not over stock footage of the Ku Klux Klan burning across. So let's see, what's the most outlying problem with this movie to me? It's hard to pick just one. I mean, besides the casual violence to women, the main character, who is of course a black man who goes undercover to infiltrate the KKK, is played by a white actor. Okay, okay, come on. Okay, all right. And it hasn't hurt you any. I'm still a Negro, baby. I'm still a Negro. Is he a convincing black man? No, absolutely not. Does his voice sound exactly like it was when he's playing the white character and also the black character? Yes, yes it does. Am I going to keep asking these questions and I'm just going to answer myself? Only time will tell. And obviously this was like, what, 50 years before Tropic Thunder? So obviously no intentional anti-humor, meta-humor going on here. This is just straight up fucking 
awkwardness and terrible casting. And this is kind of the problem with the movie, because now you start to get into the racial uh, overtones, or what's the word? You know, it sends the message that white audiences and general audiences in general are not ready to have a hero who's black and it has to be played by a white man and you know even on top of that there's actually a black villain in this movie which uh if it were a different movie if it were a different vibe if it was completely different proceedings it might be interesting to also have a black villain but uh in this one again it just seems like yeah we're not ready to uh have a non-white hero and a villain that isn't black so uh, let's just stick this evil guy in there and, uh, well, I'm sure things will pan out for him. No, he actually gets hanged. He is hanged, folks. Dialogue is kind of all over the place. You got these, like, almost overcompensated for in the writing racist cops. We got some dings and some dangs and even a couple of cotton pickings. And, uh, you know, all sorts of flub dialogue was kind of left in there. It's as if the filmmakers were like, okay, uh, I don't want to second get this. Uh, we've already been uh, putting money down on this, and uh, well, let's just keep it going. Well, I guess at some point I have to address what the plot is. Uh, our main character is a uh, black man who decides, you know what, I'm tired of this. I want to go to a cafe and have a coffee and just live in peace. So he goes to the cafe that says, no, no, <laughs> allowed on the uh, front door and he walks in there and asks for a coffee and it's very awkward but you know I'm sure this will change things around right he's immediately in the next scene fucking murdered all right well that seems like enough uh, enough to go on a uh, rampage or some sort of retribution if not retaliation for it. oh okay and now a small child was just burned alive Okay, subtle. All right, let's get to the fucking fun stuff where the white black guy becomes a white guy. White. White. <sighs> okay, so then now we're finally off on the plot, and it's, uh, oh, our main character is not great at playing a black man, and he's certainly not great at playing a black man playing a white man. I'm a Negro, baby. I already told you, we can't have kids. This is him talking to his white uh, girlfriend. So yeah, basically, in short, uh, he finally kind of comes to his senses and is like, yeah, what's a good idea if I just infiltrate the clan? And then he sort of starts talking to the, the mayor or whoever he is. And, you know, he's clearly in the KKK and he says, I'm a Nazi sympathizer, whatever. And then blah, 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 and he, you know, runs over the fucking burning cross with his car and then, uh, you know, Whatever. <sighs> I really did not feel feel good um, watching this movie, and uh, I'm already regretting this review, guys. <laughs> I thought this would be fun. I thought it would be funny. I would go, hey, you know that new movie that's in theaters, Black Klansman? Uh, well, I'm going to be hardcore, and I'm going to give you the original story. You mean when the original guy in real life actually infiltrated the clan? No, no, no. I'm going to give you a mid-60s exploitation movie called Black Klansman that has its priorities all over the place and all the wrong places. You know, in truth, this movie predated the actual real-life events of infiltrating the Klan undercover by at least a decade, so you could think of this movie as, uh, you know, like a real trailblazing movie, real cutting edge. Just kidding. Oh, fuck. Uh, this movie really feels like the end of an era for movies. In this case, this is a good thing. Yeah, yeah I don't think this movie's trying to, um, you know, declare itself on one side or the other. It just kind of seems like a cheap cash-in at the end of the day, and it's, you know, it's a shocking title and shocking images, and that's how they drew the initial idiots into the theater, and that's how they got this fucking idiot to watch it, because I saw it on Amazon Prime. I was like, what is this? What is this? And then maybe like a month later, like clockwork, New movie by Spike Lee is currently being filmed. Black Klansman. Also, this is not even the same, like, kind of black exploitation before black exploitation movie of its type. Because there's some movie called, like, oh, oh, My Baby's Black or something like that. It's not exactly black exploitation in that it's, um, 
you know, it's clearly made all by white people, just a committee of fucking white people. Oh, this is also the same director, I think, as Girl in the Gold Boots, which uh, MST3K fans might be familiar with. Eh? So yeah, this movie is complete fucking garbage. Uh, I kind of watched it um, just laughing at the absurdity to myself. I would definitely not recommend showing this movie to anybody or even letting anyone know that you know it exists because you might be arrested. But, um, you know, if you want to watch this alone, yeah, just watch it alone. Don't tell anyone. Just turn all the lights off. Take your pants off. Oh, what have I done? Well, at least the movie ends with an inspiring quote from... Who was it? Hmm. JFK. What happened to him? Oh, yeah, he was fucking murdered. Why did I do this? Why did I, you know, why did I do this movie review? I really don't know. I thought it was going to be funny. Um, it's even weird to admit that parts of it made me laugh. From uh, certain levels of irony, I suppose. Fuck. This was even, like, cringier and more uncomfortable to watch than uh, Irreversible, honestly. <laughs> I reviewed Irreversible, and this made me more uncomfortable. I'm sweating right now. I mean, it's a sweaty basement right now. All right, just, you know what? Fuck this. All right, enough, guys. That's it. That's over. It's over. Get the fuck out of my house. Clamp and stay sexy. Whatever the fuck.